Example seven, graph the function, find the y-intercept in the horizontal asymptotes. Now, would this be something you'd expect them to just graph without their calculator? Maybe not right away, but Maybe hopefully not. at some point, yes. At some point, you should be able to kind of get used get to it. Get a shape idea. So graph this on your calculator, and um, it should look like... Where'd our calculator go? It, oh, it's right there. Oh, hey. Uh, yeah, there a logistic is. function... Is it going through one? It's going to go through, uh, well, in this case, it won't go through one. Um, because when you're at zero, it's going to go through 12 for when this you're, one. When you're at zero? It'll go through six. It'll go through six. It'll go through? Six. Four. Because 12 plus one, yes, yes, four. That's what I said. I said four. One plus two times 0 0.8 to so the zero power. This is one. So right. one plus two is three. So 12 four. divided at by three zero, is four. It's at four. So, yep. Now, one thing about this function is it, it has what's called a maximum capacity or an upper limit, which is going to be that guy right there, 12. So this graph will approach but never touch the number 12. Okay, This graph will on the right, on the right. And this uh, graph will also approach but never touch 0 on the left. So, so is that an it's, asymptote? It's got like a, like a hoochie-coochie shapey thingy. Is yeah. it an asymptote? I believe 12? a 12 is a safe asymptote to say here, okay. yes. So what happens is it's got an asymptote at 12. It's similar to an exponential function that has an asymptote at 0. And then between those two things, um, it looks like an exponential function but until then it, it starts levels getting off. leveled off. There. Right. And we talked about these way at the beginning of the year when we did all of the parent functions. That's... That's not a perfect graph. No, but um, that's a good shape of what it looks like. So, yeah, so graph it on your calculator and, and see what it looks like there. You may have to do a, um, a different window so that your window goes all right. the way up to 12. Right. But uh, it should look kind of like that. The y-intercept we found by plugging in a zero here. Right, the that part wasn't is hard. Four. Right. The horizontal asymptotes come from, um, since it uh, it's not being shifted up or down, like there's no like plus out here right it's at there's one at zero and then there's one at the upper limit which, which is, is 12 12 and that upper limit will on the, on the logistic function whatever numbers in the numerator will be your upper limit yeah so here's a little box that has some info about logistic growth functions um, all of these things a b c and k are positive constraints where b is less than one um, a logistic growth function in x can be written in this form that we have here and so they said b is less than 1. So if you have a number like we did, 0 0.8, that's less than 1. Um, but they could put an e in there instead. Which is bigger than 1. Which is bigger than 1. But so, so you have to account for the bigger than 1. By putting a negative in the exponent. So um, These are excellent equations for modeling population. Because honestly, populations can typically only survive so long until they've reached a maximum population right like you can, so they it, can only sustain themselves or it takes care of the exponential part but right. then there is a, a place with populations where you you can't get any bigger or like if the super flu is going around like swine flu did a few years ago You're only gonna... only so many people can get that and then you just run out of people and the logistic function is a model for that as well exactly